Hi everybody, this is Maya Good and I am reviewing the Paper for Fountain Pens journal. I've had this journal for about 18 months and I wanted to bring it to you. Now mind you, all of my reviews are done with the eye of someone that is doing long-term writing in a journal. And I've really struggled through the years to find a journal that not only supported writing for long portions of time, but also really encouraged me to write in it every day. And I had hoped that this journal would do that because it is made with very special paper. It's made with Tomoe River paper, and it's one of the few hardbound journals that is made with Tomoe River paper. It's the only one that I can think of that is available um, without having to go to someone and have it made specifically for you. The binding on this journal is gorgeous. When you open it up, it lays flat right away. The paper is light. One of the benefits of a Tomoe River journal is this is 320 um, pages, so that's what, 150, one, 160 sheets, and that is a very thin journal. So you can have a lot more sheets in a much smaller space because it's only 52 grams of paper. Now, that said, even though it's only 52 gram paper, it works beautifully with fountain pens, works beautifully with pencil. So when I got this journal, I was really excited. I thought that this was going to be my poetry study journal and that I would enjoy using it. I found a couple things. Now, first, let me go with the positives. The positive of this journal is that it's hardbound, so you don't have to get a leather cover. It's very sturdy. Um, it's going to look nice on your bookshelf when it's full. You can have a whole line of these on a bookshelf and it will look beautiful. It's also gonna travel well because it's hardbound. And as I said, not only do you not have to worry about the extra bulk of carrying a leather cover, but you don't have to worry about the extra expense. The other thing that's excellent about this journal is most of the few handfuls of journals that you can find made with Tomoe River paper, even one-offs that individuals do, use the Tomoe River paper in um, the vanilla paper. And that is because in other brands of paper, the white paper is really stark. And so it's very expensive to make those journals and very few people will buy the white journals. The paper for fountain pen journals come in the Tomoe River white paper, which is my favorite paper on the planet. Um, the Tomoe River white paper is a very warm white. It's almost an ivory. Um, so it's not like a stark white, let me see here. Like here is printer paper. You can see the difference if the lighting is good. The Tomoe River white paper is ever so slightly warmer than the printer paper. And that's something I really like. So you get the warmth of an ivory, of a, of a vanilla paper or an ivory paper without having the yellow quality and without sacrificing um, so much of your ink color from using um, a more yellow paper. So I love this paper. Now it doesn't have lines, so what I found for writing is I needed a guide sheet, which normally isn't a big deal if you're writing only a couple pages. It shows through beautifully, it's easy to use a guide sheet, but the problem comes where if you're sitting down and writing for an hour and a half, constantly moving this guide sheet really slows down um, my speed and my rhythm of my writing, which is important when you're writing fiction. So I found that I only used a small amount of it and then I, I just drifted away from this journal and I didn't want to use it. The other thing is the binding is so beautiful that it is really hard to open this up and start a new one. It's not a journal that says, write in me, write in me. It's a journal that says, I'm special and whatever you write in me is gonna be stuck in me forever. <laughs> it's one of those journals. So I do tend to not enjoy that as much. But the biggest problem for me is actually the size of this journal. Originally, it was advertised as A5 size, which it is not. It is much smaller than A5 size. And since I bought this journal, um, it no longer says A5 size on the website. But even then, my journal still does not, still is not the same size as the current journals. So I don't know if it's still missized or if the new journals are bigger. But the cover on this journal is five and one eighth inches wide, and it is eight and a quarter tall. But the problem is the paper is even smaller than that. 
So when I sit down and I write in this journal, I'm only getting just over mm, four and seven eighths, four and seven eighths wide. And I'm getting eight inches tall. Because it, of the way it is bound, we've lost a lot of surface area on this journal. And if you're writing something that's really special, that it doesn't really matter, no big deal. But if you're writing long term, that extra space to the side here and that extra space here makes for a much more comfortable writing experience. So when I write in this, my hand falls off the page way too soon. And I actually find writing in this journal not the most comfortable. A lot of people write in this journal this way, and I've tried to do this, and I don't like it with my hand over the binding. But a lot of people have remedied the issues that I had as far as the size by writing in it the other direction. Um, you know, I love this journal. It's so pretty. It is really, really pretty. Um, and But the size was always a problem for me. In addition, with 320 sheets, this journal is $29 a journal. Now, they did come out with a larger size. It's a B5 size, which is probably, you know, after looking at the way this is bound, it's probably a hair under that. Regardless, that would be a much more comfortable size for me to write in. But that journal is $40. So for 320 pages. So while this is a lovely journal, for heavy writing, I don't find it practical. Who do I think this journal is good for? I think it's good for anyone that loves fountain pens, that loves art journaling, that doesn't use up a ton of pages a day. Someone that doesn't mind writing in a smaller journal. And I do think if you don't mind writing in a smaller journal and you aren't writing a ton of pages in a day, this is an ideal journal for traveling. Um, I also think it would be good for, you know, if you don't mind blank pages, like a diary type situation because it is just so sturdy like nothing is going to hurt this journal it is just a great it's well made very very well made when you look at the binding you know it's a sewn binding with a hard cover it's it's just sturdy and that's something that you really want if you're going to be writing in something every day unfortunately the size just make it uncomfortable to write for long sessions for me so that's how I feel about the Paper for Fountain Pens journal. I've always been torn about this journal, and I've wanted to do this review for a year and a half. And since I'm leaving next year, I've literally got a stack of all my old journals, and I'm trying to use up all the pages before I leave, because when I leave to travel next year, I'm only bringing three brands of journals. I'm bringing one pocket journal, a planning journal, and then there's one brand of journal that I've found um, like Highlander is the journal to, to, that for me surpasses all other journals and so I'm trying to get rid of to use up all these journals because these are not traveling with me so that's how I feel about it it's it's a really pretty journal it is really really pretty and the white paper is just exquisite any other makers that are using Tomoe River paper I encourage them not to just use the ivory paper go ahead and make things with the white paper because the white paper is not stark and I think you know with a little bit of outreach a lot of people were really gonna prefer this white paper it is lovely lovely paper so that is the Tomoe River paper that has been bound by paper for fountain pens ciao